Hey, good morning, church. I hope that you're doing well, hope that you're rested and healthy, hope you're thriving in this uh, little lockdown that we find ourselves in right now and you're not going too crazy, especially all of you with kids. <laughs> um, but it's my turn to share the devotional this morning and something that's been on my mind and heart this past week is this idea of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. Um, and uh, something I started thinking about was how 2020 is going to be a really interesting year by the time we're done with it, isn't it? Um, not only because of what we currently find ourselves in with the virus and um, how that's affecting our lives, both nationally but also individually and uh, as, a, as, a, as a community here in the Valley, um, but also this is, a, this is an election year. So coming up this fall, we're going to have another election, and it made me think back to 2016 and it's remembering how that was one of the most divisive political seasons that we've seen in recent history, isn't it? Um, and just the ways that that has kind of polarized our nation in many ways. Um, and so the question, one of the questions I want to ask this morning is, and kind of explore, is how do we as redeemed children of God, as individuals in which the Holy Spirit dwells, has taken up residence, um, how, do, how do we respond to the events around us? How do we interact with others uh, during these times that often get very heated, um, often get very passionate in, in, the, uh, in the, the opinions and the worldviews that we all hold? And um, one of the things that I want to share with you is another one of our art pieces. Um, like I shared last week, I, I hope to share and kind of expound on many of the pieces that are in the exhibit and um, hoping to keep that up as long as possible so that when we come back together, whenever that will be, uh, that we can continue to enjoy that and, and worship with uh, our artists. But this one is from Randy Benedetto and it's a wood carving. I'll kind of scan close up here so you can see some of those details. And the inspiration for this piece comes from Psalm 23, there we go, <laughs> Psalm, uh, um, excuse me, from Proverbs 2, 3 through 6, Proverbs 2, 3 through 6, and it says this, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Then he gives this description of the piece. The prospector digs in the dirt for treasure, but at the end of the day, he finds true worth and wisdom in God's word. The donkey was completed years before the rest of the scene was completed, and the, and the prospector was later added. Each of the 20 individual pieces was carved separately from basswood, then painted with acrylic and watercolor. Uh, now, one of the things that I really love about this piece and how he's captured this idea of seeking wisdom is you can see all of the other details around him, right? All the, all the activities, um, all the, the, the representations of work and striving that are paused, that are um, laying silent and, and dormant around him. And then we find him right in the middle, um, ceasing from those things and looking to God's word. Um, I'm going to try to turn this around, too, so you can see... You can see right, uh, let's see, there we go. <laughs> you can see um, right on that little book there, he's written the Holy Bible. Um, and so this is a really good example for us, um, right? Especially that concept of cease striving and know that I am God is another good scriptural reference for this. Um, and so it begs this question of how can we follow this example? Um, how can we put these principles into action in the year 2020, uh, these principles of seeking God's word, in, in God's word, seeking knowledge and understanding and having that flow from the Lord through us and the way that we interact with others. Um, and so uh, along this lines, I was um, drawn to a paragraph here from Oswald Chambers' book. Many of you are, I'm sure, familiar with this. It's uh, My Utmost for His Highest. And uh, just the first paragraph for March 31st in his devotional here says this. If we are not heedful of the way of the Spirit of God, or excuse me, if we are not heedful of the way the Spirit of God works in us, we will become spiritual hypocrites. We see where others, uh, wow, we see where other folks are failing 
and we turn our discernment into the guide of criticism instead of into intercession on their behalf. The revelation is made to us not through the acuteness of our minds, but by the direct penetration of the Spirit of God. And if we are not heedful of the source of the revelation, we will become criticizing centers and forget that God says, He shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. Take care lest you play the hypocrite by spending all your time trying to get others right before others right before you worship God yourself. Let me read that last sentence again. Take care lest you play the hypocrite by spending all your time trying to get others right before you worship God yourself. Wow. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate about Oswald Chambers is that he doesn't pull any punches, does he? Uh, he goes right for the jugular and he really uh, hammers home certain truths in our lives from Scripture. Um, and so the interesting thing, too, to remember is that he wrote this back in the 1930s, uh, long before social media was ever in the picture, of course. Um, the, the technology to be able to immediately enter the public sphere of conversation, uh, to immediately, within seconds, be able to interact with each other um, from, from, from long distances and from very diverse backgrounds, um, much more than ever happened um, long before social media um, came onto the scene. And so the reality is that um, we all have this temptation to be right and to set others right as well. Um, and social media makes that way too easy for us, doesn't it? Um, this, this, this temptation to immediately respond to things that we see without taking the time to contemplate and to think through. And then we see the fallout of that often too, don't we? And the way that conversations progress online. And the way that our own character, or lack thereof in some cases, is portrayed, not just within the body of Christ, but also to an unbelieving world that's watching. Um, and so this question is important then. What does seeking wisdom look like in this time? What does it look like for us as believers, as children of God, um, to, to mimic God and have that, that wisdom and that knowledge and that understanding flowing through us from our mouths or from our fingers, as a case may be? Um, and so there are just a few uh, hopefully practical and helpful things that I hope that you can incorporate into your interaction with others um, in online communication, whether email or texting or social media, um, but of course this um, takes this plays a role in, in um, interpersonal communication as well, doesn't it? With speaking, um, but especially with this with this area of of posting and responding and reacting online. Uh, so the first one is this: is to ask the question, is it necessary? Is it necessary? I think oftentimes we we come up with information or we find information. Um, or opinions on things that we think that everyone around us just has to know, has to see, has to hear. Um, and in some cases, and I would say in few cases, that is the case, um, where there are, there are things that people do need to know. But I think often cases, um, we are responding out of an emotional response that we've had to something, and we start to think that everyone needs this, when the reality is that everyone doesn't. Um, and so that's a difficult question to ask, to step back and say, is this necessary? And try to look at it objectively. So that's the first thing. Second thing to ask is, is it truthful? Is it truthful? Uh, oftentimes we end up sharing information that's not true and, and not necessarily out of a motive to deceive or to be untruthful, but because we haven't really done our due diligence in seeking out the truth of a matter. Um, in in researching, if that's the case, or in investigating or talking to another person to see if um, if this is truthful about this person that someone else may be talking about or commenting on. And so that's another really important thing, is to make sure that the information that we share or the responses that we have to people or to issues, that it's, that it's filled with truth. It's really important. And then the third thing is, is it graceful? Is it filled with grace? 
Is it, is it smelling of love is maybe an interesting way to say that. Um, I think oftentimes uh, we, we forget that um, as we post, and as we react to things, um, that we forget what our own voice sounds like sometimes. And so some helpful ways that I hope that you can incorporate and that I know have really helped me um, in the past is to use that notes app on your phone. If you have a smartphone or some sort of a cell phone, um, most often they have an app there that comes with a phone called notes. And so you can just write notes, type in notes and different thoughts on there. Um, and so you can use that to write out your comment that you would have put online, write out that email, um, rather than an actual email with, with the email addresses in the, in the, in the two, um, column there to write that outside of your email app and, um, or some sort of reaction to something that you might have a text to a friend, things like that, write that out in the notes app. Or if you don't have that, just a pad of paper and then let it sit, let it sit there for whether it's just an hour or maybe it's half a day, maybe it's a number of days, depending on the, on the situation, but let it sit, sit, let it marinate and then come back to it. And then you can more objectively ask these questions of yourself and what you've written and ask, is this necessary? Is this filled with truth? And then most importantly, is this filled with grace? Is this dripping in love? Another thing you can do along those lines is to read back what you've written to yourself and, and pretend that what you've written is actually something that someone else has written. And so you're reading it through the voice of someone else and then see how you respond to that. How do you react? What does the tone sound like? What does the information look like that, that this other person has written when in actuality it's what you've written? <laughs> okay, but that's, that's a really helpful way to step outside of yourself objectively and see if what you what you're trying to communicate is meeting these criteria um, but really even with all of those objective practical things in mind this is the bottom line the bottom line is that our hearts need to be in a position of humility uh, in order for this practice to happen that we find in proverbs here of, of seeking wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and then um, finding that in the Lord and allowing him to cultivate that in us, and then having that flow through us. We have to be in that position of submission, don't we, to the Lord? Submission to him and to his spirit in us. Submission to his word that we're, that we're trying to digest. And then in that flow through us, we have that humility, don't we? That we are setting aside our own intellect. We're, we're setting aside our own agendas. We're setting aside some of our emotion and our, our desire to try to, to set others right. And instead, we're allowing the Father to infiltrate our minds and our hearts. And that the information that we share, the communication that we have with others, is flowing through that filter of the Holy Spirit in us. So I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope that that's something that you can take with you this week. Um, something, of course, to always remember is um, as, as we seek to, to uh, engage with these very important topics um, that are going on around us and online, um, that you know, 20, 30 years from now, these things will be history, won't they? Um, some, of, some of it very important history, no doubt, but they will be history. But the thing that's going to last is our legacy as believers, isn't it? Is the character that we show within the body and also to the world that's watching us. And so my hope is that um, as people interact with you, that people find the love of Jesus. That people find truth that people find information that's necessary and that they see the grace and the love of the Father through you. Well, we love you. And again, as we keep saying, I hope that you um, will stay in touch with us as a church and let us know how we can help you, how we can walk with you, um, how we can pray for you. Those things are really important to us. All right, hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much.